You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. All right, folks, uh, this is Roland Martin broadcasting live from Dallas, Texas, of course, aware this is one of the Super Tuesday states where folks will be going to the polls uh, here in Texas and in 14 other states and locations making their choice for the Democratic nominee for President of the United States. It has been a busy 48 hours since black voters largely made their pick in South Carolina. Tom Steyer was one of the first to drop out that night. Pete Buttigieg yesterday dropped out of the presidential campaign. And today, the moment I landed in Dallas, we saw the news. Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota, suspending her campaign, is actually flying to Dallas tonight where she and Buttigieg will join former Vice President Joe Biden at a rally uh, to give their endorsement to Joe Biden. The race uh, is, of course, coalescing around Joe Biden, many of those moderate candidates who don't have a shot. Why? Because all the focus is on stopping Senator Bernie Sanders, who is leading in the polls here in Texas, but also in California, and is going to pick up a significant number of delegates tomorrow on Super Tuesday. Now, one of the folks who's been dealing with all of these campaigns uh, has been Reverend Dr. William J. Barber, talking about issues uh, around the poor, trying to get the candidates to focus on poverty. He joins us right now on Roland Martin Unfiltered. Reverend Barber, how you doing? doing man i'm in birmingham in a super tuesday state we've been spending three days down here in the south trying to get people to understand that poor people black and white and others are literally the political calculus transformers if we can ever get these candidates to focus and we're here for a big mass meeting leading to june 20th of the mass poor people's assembly tomorrow march on, on washington you talk about, of course, uh, trying to get them to understand those issues. I was with Senator Doug Jones in December uh, there in Birmingham. I was there for a National Association of Black Journalists board meeting. He and I had lunch. He told me that there are 900,000 unregistered people in Alabama, 500,000 of them African-American. Well, that is true, but there's something else that we, look, we need to look at. There are 1.5 million adults voting age adults in Alabama who are poor and low wealth. Trump won the last time in Alabama by, by only 500,000 votes. 900,000 people that were already registered didn't vote. Doug Jones won by only 22,000 votes. In the South, in the 13 former Confederate states, there are 75 million poor and low-income adults. Trump won by 23, 20, uh, his total vote counted was something like 23 million votes. So there are three times more poor and low wealth people who registered to vote in the South. And there's not been a focus on that, even though all of these southern states in North Alabama, for instance, 43 percent of the state is poor. Large, they don't have health insurance. Uh, nearly 50 percent of the people plus make less than a living wage. The political calculus is really with poor and low wealth people and getting black and white and brown to come together. One of the things I'm concerned about, uh, Roland, is I keep hearing this language, whether we need a revolution or, or a moderate candidate. Well, in Birmingham, you know, it was Dr. King who challenged this notion of moderation in the face of so much injustice. I think what they ought to be saying, the issue is not do we need a revolution in the face of the racism, retrenchment, and injustice of Trump. Surely we need a revolution. What kind of revolution ought to be the debate? But anybody that marched across the Edmund Pettus Bridge yesterday and said, which was a place of revolution, to say we don't need a revolution of values and a revival of moral values, it seems to be off-centered in this most critical moment. But one of the things that jumps out is not just speaking to these issues, but also how do you get them out to the polls? You have been traveling around the country with repairs of the breach for the last several years, starting with more Mondays in North Carolina, reaching those people who no one pays attention to. You have candidates, Democratic candidates, who spend so much time trying to get suburban white women to vote Democratic. Then, of course, you have d d d d other Democrats who say, well, let's just keep getting the same people out. The reality is, if you're speaking to those folks who normally are not voting, you actually can run up significant margins, uh, even in southern states. But you got to talk to them. You got to speak to their issues. And you can't just have debates where you say middle class, middle class, middle class, middle class, middle class, as if that's the only people who you're talking to in a presidential campaign. 
Exactly. It's quite disrespectful. It does not be a coalition. Uh, the reality is, for instance, folk came and marched across the, cell, the bridge yesterday, but did not go in the poor community of Selma, did not talk to poor people in this state. We have candidates that run right past. Democrats are, are run from poverty. Dem uh, Republicans tend to racialize poverty. And they act like it's some kind of rocket science. What do you do when you want these other communities to vote for? You go to them. What do you do? Do when you want them to vote for you talk about them you say their name you call their condition well how is it that you can't even say the condition and the name of 43 percent of this nation 140 million people it, it, it is it is it is a backwards way rolling of running political campaigns to almost say we can ignore half the half of the nation and then expect to have a transformational turnout but that also lets us know just civil rights movement it has the movement has to be ahead of the politics because the politicians will only move according to their consultants. And we have had politicians tell us, some off record and some on record, that their consultants tell them not to say the word poor, not to talk about poor. And I said, well, who's telling them that? Because the people that we're in the midst of are not ashamed of being called poor. They're ashamed of a country that ignores their poverty and refuses to speak to it. And if we don't, we will continue to give extremist candidates like Trump an easy path to victory because we are keeping the, the demographic and the number of people in the electorate small. The only way to beat extremism is to expand the electorate. Uh, last week, of course, South Carolina voters went to the polls. You were also holding uh, your Poor People's Campaign forums. Uh, we've been restreaming the one with Senator Bernie Sanders. I believe Pete Buttigieg uh, and Senator Elizabeth Warren also participated. Uh, did Vice President Joe Biden also participate? You know, you know what about that? Because you're trying to get these candidates to speak to this issue. And unfortunately, you have these debate moderators working for these networks who are not even bringing this issue up. That's exactly right. And we've invited all of them. We've not heard yet from Vice President. We heard they wanted to, but we haven't been able to settle on a same thing with Warren. We invited all of them. We even invited the White House because you can't leave these issues alone and you can't refuse to address the other four issues that connect to it systemic racism, systemic poverty, ecological devastation. Think about it, Roland. Here we are in the South. We marched across the bridge yesterday, but the things that people marched across 55 years ago have been rolled back. We have empirical data that the same states that are racist voter suppression states are also states where the politicians who use race to get elected then turn around and block living wages, block health care, which in fact affects more poor white people in raw numbers than black. Now, how do you have a national conversation and not have that conversation? How do you want to allow people to come on stage as a moderator and not ask them where do they stand on voting rights and ending systemic racist voter suppression and gerrymandering and where do they stand on the issue of poverty? We, we, if we don't get over this and deal with it, we are going to continue to have a, a, a democracy that is weak and anemic in its participation. People talk about South Carolina and, and what it did. Yes, it was a reset for a campaign, but tomorrow will be a relation because you have more people, you have a broader uh, a spectrum of the population. But here's the other question. We say 81% voted, 35% voted. Of what? How many people didn't vote in right. South Carolina? How many people didn't turn out? How many people are still not moving because they're not hearing their vote? There are 1.5 million poor and low wealth adults in South Carolina. Trump won uh, last time South Carolina by 300,000 votes. There were a million registered voters in South Carolina that didn't even vote. We have to have a deeper analysis and role, and that's why what you're doing is so important to the American conversation. Uh, well, I think we have to continue the conversation and continue pushing these candidates. But also, I would say the next debate, whenever that's taking place, go hard at whatever network is sponsoring to say y'all have right. got to bring it up. But I keep I keep saying this, Reverend Barber, part of the problem is that the people who are asking the questions and the executive That's running right. these networks, they are a part of the 1%, and they don't deal with these issues. They don't see poverty. Right. Their kids are in private school, and that's why you don't hear it come up, because it doesn't that's affect right. them. It doesn't affect them. And we have, so, as you said, you told me one time, vaping, seven people die. 
it is a national emergency. 700 people die from poverty. We haven't heard yet. We intend to go after the state after the networks. We intend to demand that these candidates demand that it happen. If you could change the debate stage for a billionaire, you can change the debate stage for 140 million poor and low wealth people in this country. We're not backing up. We're going to continue to mobilize. We sent out a tweet yesterday and asked for 55,000 people in every state to get five people and turn out to the poll around our agenda. Rolling in less than a half day, we had 300,000 people respond to that tweet. We are not playing in this movement. We are building very seriously white and black together because we, the p poverty and p people who are poor hold the key to the transforming of the political calculus in this country. All right, Reverend Dr. William Barber, we surely appreciate it. Uh, keep up the fight. We'll be right there with you. Thank you, my friend. Take care. God bless. All right, folks, back to our Roadmark Uncle video in just one moment. All right, so a lot of y'all always asking me about terms, some of the pocket squares that I wear. Now, I don't know. Robert don't have one on. Nope. Now, I don't particularly like the white pocket squares. I don't like even the silk ones. And so I was reading GQ magazine a number of years ago, and I saw uh, this guy who had this, this pocket square here, and it looks like a flower. Uh, this is called a shibori pocket square. This is how the Japanese manipulate the fabric to create this sort of flower effect. So I'm going to take it out and then place it in my hand so you see what it looks like. And I said, man, this is pretty cool. And so I tracked down the, it took me a year to find a company that did it. Uh, and so uh, they basically about 47 different colors. And so I love them because, again, as men, we don't have many accessories to wear. So we don't have many, many options. Uh, and so this is really a pretty cool uh, pocket square. And what I love about this here is you saw uh, when it's uh, in, in the pocket, you know, it gives you that flower effect like that. But if I wanted to also, unlike other, because if I flip it and turn it over, it actually gives me a different type of texture. And so therefore it gives me a different look. So there you go. So uh, if you actually want to uh, get one of these Shibori pocket squares, we have them in 47 different colors. All you got to do is go to rollinglistmartin.com forward slash pocket squares. All right, so first of all, that graphic is way too small. So uh, tomorrow we're going to run it right down here all across the screen. So it's rollinglistmartin.com forward slash pocket squares. All you got to do is go to my website uh, and you can actually uh, get this. Now, for those of you who are members of our Bring the Funk fan club, there's a discount for you to get our pocket squares. That's why you also got to be a part of our Bring the Funk fan club. Uh, and so that's what we want you to do. And so it's pretty cool. So if you want to jazz your look up, you can do that. In addition, uh, y'all see me with some of the feather pocket squares. My sister who's a designer. She actually makes these. They're all custom made. So when you also go to the website, you can also order one of the customized uh, feather pocket squares uh, right there at rollingsmartin.com forward slash pocket squares. So please do so. And of course, uh, at goes to support the show. And again, if you're a Brenda Funk fan club member, you get a discount. This is why you should join the fan club. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video. You want to check out Roland Martin Unfiltered? YouTube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roland Martin Unfiltered. See that name right there? Roland Martin Unfiltered. Like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash Roland S. Martin. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so when we go live, you'll know it.